Has anyone here taken an extended journey, like a month, six weeks, half a year? Anybody done that? Ra raise your hand if you've done that. Quite a few people. Interesting. Why, why did you do it? Someone. You hate winter. All right. So, so going to, to Florida, to Palm Springs, to Arizona, where do you go? Spain and Portugal. I want to hang out with you more. <laughs> Going to Spain and Portugal uh, to get away from the winter. Right? So one is to get away from the winter. Why else do we do this? You wanted to see the Galapagos. What else? Irving? Took a sabbatical with your family. On your 60th birthday by yourself to Israel. Kol kavod. Um, a lot of people, I'm sorry, what? Want to take a break from work. Want to take a break from work. Who doesn't? <laughs> I'm sorry? You were young and you wanted an adventure. Um, I remember the first time I had heard about doing anything like this. Um, I'm a big movie and TV person, so this is going to be a movie reference from the 80s. Remember Crocodile Dundee? Right? And at the end of the movie, what does he go and do? He goes on a walkabout, is what he called it, a walkabout, which is a Australian Aborigine ritual journey. That's what a walkabout is. It's a ritual journey. It's a journey and this is the language that we use very much even today. It's a journey to go find oneself. A journey to go find oneself. It's a journey to go find oneself. What does that sound like from our own tradition? What, what does a walkabout remind you of? Uh, uh, traveling to Israel? Years in the desert. Abraham leaving. Right? The Parsha's name is Lech Lecha. Go walk to yourself. Go find yourself. Our tradition is literally a journey, which is why one of the metaphors I'd like to use for Torah is the metaphor of a journal. The Torah, for me, represents the journal of the Israelites and the Jewish people of their encounter with God and themselves. It's a journal. The word Torah, it's shorish, yud, resh, hey, has a, a, a sense of directionality to it. What's the Hebrew word for Jewish law? Halakha, which means literally to walk, right? I'm sorry? The way to walk, right? It's a journey. We're loaded with journey. And I've been thinking about this for a couple of reasons um, at this particular moment. One is the second of the two Torah readings that we read today, Mase, I called your attention to the itinerary, to the triptych of the Jewish people, the, the record of the journey they took through the wilderness. But I'm thinking about that and that language in particular because I'm preparing a triptych in the fall, literally right after Simchat Torah. Our plan currently, unless something changes, is that Michelle, our middle daughter, and I are going to get in the car and drive to California. And so what's going to be our journey along the way? Where are we going to stop? What are we going to experience? What are we going to learn? By the way, if you have any ideas or suggestions, please let me know. Uh, Larry, Nina, Wallach have already gave me a whole bunch of them, but I'm looking for more. Route 66, there you go. Except for I don't have a convertible. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking about that, but I'm also thinking about it because Michelle currently uh, is in Europe. She's in Italy right now because for, for her, graduating from uh, TMU, and before she goes to this next stage of her life, and because of a lot of other reasons, she wanted to literally take a month after we journeyed as a family in Israel uh, to, to go and explore the world a little bit and go find herself, literally lech lecha. 
Um, I'm also thinking about it because when I was in Israel with our family a couple of weeks ago, for my sister and her families, for my, for my nephews and my niece, um, this was their first time in Israel and the most immersive Jewish experience they've ever had. And it was fabulous to experience Israel through their eyes um, and the things that they learned. So for example, um, do you know how to make a map of Israel with your body? Here's the map of Israel. All right, I gotta get this Here's the map of Israel. A lot's at the bottom. This is the Golan Heights. Jerusalem is, is the heart. Some people say it's the Pipic. We won't talk about where Beersheba is. Um, but then you've got the dead, the dead, the med, and the red, right? Um, you'll never, ever forget the map of Israel again. <laughs> and when I did that with my nephew, whose bar mitzvah we celebrated, every time we went to a new location, every time we went to a new place, he made the map of Israel, and on his body we showed him where we were. It was a fascinating experience of Jewish identity and of exploration. Um, but where I want to go to is I asked you to think about the way in which the Torah outlines the journey of the Jewish people from A to B, from, B, from A to B, from B, from A to B, B to C, and so forth and so on. There's a repetition of the place in which they, they stay, and we, we mark the importance of this by reading it in the trope of Shiratayam, of the Song of the Sea. Why do you think the Torah outlines the journey in that way? And, uh, say it again, Irving. Every place in your lifetime is important to you. Say more about that. And if not you, somebody else. Gary. It's all about water. Sorry? It's all about water. That's interesting. So you're connecting the, um, the, the song of the sea to the notion that every place you go, there has to be water. If there's no water, there's no life. Very practical answer. Yeah. The journey through life is not smooth. Um, definitely hiccups along the way. To remember where you were and where you're going, and also to remember what were the life experiences, the growth, the hiccups that you experienced along the way, such that um, such that you can grow as a human being, as an individual. The Midrash takes that and makes it explicit. Um, Midrash Tanchuma, for example, says, commenting on the beginning of the Parsha, Ela Masei B'nei Yisrael, these are the stages. Masei are the stages of the children of Israel. Right, so it translates Masei, the journey, as the stages. The matter is comparable to a king whose son is ill, says the Midrash. He brought him to a certain place to heal him. In other words, the king takes his son to a specialist in order to find healing. And when they're returning, the father recounts to his son the stages of their journey. Here's where we slept. Here we cooled off. Here you had a headache. Similarly, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God, says to Moses, recount all the places in which B'nai Yisrael provoked me. It's therefore stated these are the stages. All the places where B'nai Yisrael almost fell off the wagon, so to speak, and lost their way by moving away from God. The Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidut, um, says that, these were the marches, Elamase Vene Yisrael. I heard in the name of my father, Zichrono Livracha, that all 42 stops on the journey of the Israelites were and are also for every person the journey of life. From the day of his birth until his return to eternity, to realize that from the day of birth and the departure 
of one's mother's womb is like going out of Egypt. So the Baal Shem Tov is comparing birth to the experience of Yitziat Mitzrayim, of going out of Egypt. And as is well known, after you go from stop to stop until you come to the journey of the world, which is always coming, meaning the time of the Mashiach and the future. And finally, on this, Rav Dov Ber, the Magid of Metzorich says, the kavanah, the intent of each of these marches or stages was to repair, the taken, these places, and to bring out from each its holy sparks. Therefore, the name of the stations were written in the Torah as are the places that the Israelites repaired. Moses wrote, recorded all the places from which the holy sparks were extracted during the course of their journey. They didn't travel to other places, only to those places that were divinely hinted at for repair and therefore directed by Adonai. Here we have three different examples, three different examples of how our ancestors understood that the retelling of the journey is not simply to mark places on a map, but to dig a little bit deeper to reflect upon the experiences that B'nai Israel had in those places, such that they either learned something new, that they themselves grew, or that there was something in the place itself in which there was a divine holy spark that was required of tikkun, of repair, and the relationship between Israel and Torah and God and that place provided the tikkun. It's the no notion of journeying of life. Every verse where the travels are mentioned, this notion of vayisu and vayichanu are repeated over and over again. They traveled and they camped. They didn't just wander. That's the point. Traveled and camped. They learned something new about themselves, about Torah, and about God. Everything they experienced, every new place, every new battle, every disaster, every victory, every people, and place they encountered became a place in which they learned their, and practiced their values. As a people, we've been known as the wandering people because until the state of Israel, we had no home. For 2,000 years, we traveled and we camped through history and throughout the world. But we have not only survived, but flourished for 4,000 years. Not so much because of what happened in the Vayisu, in the wandering, in the travel, but because of what happened in the Vayichanu, in those places where we were able to dwell, to camp. Wherever we went, there was worship and study, marriage and baby namings, B'nai Mitzvah. In every place, Jewish life took place, and our people and tradition have grown. And I want to comment that in every place, including in the depths of the darkness, did those um, uh, opportunities of hope and of continuation continue. Vayisu vayichanu. So I'm looking forward to the journey that I'm about to take, maybe. She may have been offered a job in Toronto, so we'll see if she stays. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to these journeys. I always look forward to traveling because it's through, the, it's through traveling, it's through uh, experiencing new opportunities that we grow as human beings. Same is true for Jewish life. No matter where one travels, we have the same Torah, the same prayer book, uh, the same prayers.